I love this time of the year where the woodland floor is just a wash of colour and that raw garlic really gets up into the nose. So today I'm going to be photographing wild flowers. On the Z7 II, while my D850 is currently being repaired, more about that a little bit later. Morning everyone, welcome to the vlog. It's always a little bit harder when you're using a new camera for the first time. Everything that you're used to doing automatically suddenly becomes a bit more difficult and you have to think. So of course all of the dials and all of the settings are just in that slightly different place on the Z7 camera. But uh, what I've done is I've, I've just come up close to the wild garlic here and we've got this beautiful light that's just dropping in behind through the trees there. If anything, it's just starting to get a little bit too bright. But what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm shooting on a wide angle lens just to give a real nice bit of depth for this beautiful wash of color that just runs through the woods here. And then with that beautiful light coming through in the backdrop. And, uh, but it's just that little bit trickier, just finding those controls so I'm slowed up a little. I've slowed up a little bit here, and uh, having to think that little bit more. But uh, I'll uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see we've got this carpet of wild garlic just covering the forest floor here, with this beautiful light coming into the background there, just coming in through the trees. But it's definitely starting to get a little bit bright now. So I think those first images that I would have captured earlier on perhaps will be a little bit better. It's just a little bit too strong coming through the back. But uh, we've also got these sort of bluebells intermingled with the wild garlic, which is just giving it that extra splash of color. So uh, anyway, not a bad start to the morning. So I've just switched over to my 70 to 200 millimeter lens so that I can actually isolate some of these beautiful wild garlic flowers. I'm shooting on a really shallow depth of field on aperture around about f2.8 and just really putting splashes of color behind them. I'm going to see if I can shoot a few with the bluebells to get that sort of beautiful soft sort of blue tones behind as well. But uh, it's, uh, it's about just finding those flowers that just stand out amongst the rest and uh, that just isolating them, just bringing out the colors of the woodland floor.
So uh, what I've done is I've switched from the 70 to 200 millimeter lens over to the 105 macro lens. I was just finding it a little bit difficult just isolating some of these flowers with such a large lens. And uh, this is working out much better for really sort of honing in on some of these beautiful wild garlic. And uh, it's interesting, you know, the, the, the Z7 is a lot smaller camera and uh, I'm, I'm definitely finding it a little bit trickier just sort of getting at the controls and dials. And we, we get used to the cameras that we actually use. So it's, but I mean, it's a great lightweight camera. I certainly think that if I was out backpacking for the day, this, is, this would be great to carry around. But I do miss the solid build of the D850 with uh, just sort of for hands and positioning and for finding the dials and switches a lot easier so anyway the sun's coming this way so I'm going to sort of keep working my way back just to sort of make sure that I'm not in too much direct sunlight and I'm just isolating some of these flowers splash a color behind bit of foliage just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest and then I'm going to head down to the water to see what I can find down there. If you follow my channel, you know that a while back I actually borrowed a, the Z8 camera and did a comparison with the D850 and the Z8. And I've got to say there was very little difference. They're very similar sized cameras. Both are a, a good solid build and a, and, and a much larger, more substantial camera than the Z7. And it wasn't so difficult to sort of switch from one to the other. The dials, the controls were very, very similar, but this is a very different experience. And uh, it's definitely taken me a little bit longer to uh, get a feel for this camera. But uh, wow, what a beautiful location though. And it's really nice just moving up and down here and just isolating the different flowers and getting sort of some different backdrops to them, some isolating some on their own, perhaps including others. I'm just going to uh, move down a little bit further and see if I can get a splash of these bluebell colours behind them and then, uh, as I said, perhaps move down further to the water and uh, perhaps include some of the sort of water coming down with some of the flowers on the banks. But uh, the midge are just starting to bite a little bit as well now. so. Uh, can't complain, it's an absolute stunning morning. So I've moved over into the woodland a little bit where I've come in amongst some of the bluebells. And what I've done is I've managed to find a couple of these wild garlic flowers just together. So we've got two together, but with that splash of bluebell behind it, which is really nice. I'll just show you what I'm looking at in the back of the camera. So you can see we've got these two wild garlic flowers that are just sat side by side. And then we've got that splash of bluebell behind which really does break up the colour. So we've got the greens of the foliage, the bluebells behind, and then those two 
beautiful soft white garlic flowers and it really does make for a beautiful composition so I'm just gonna take this shot I'm still shooting on my 105 macro lens which is I'm finding it so much easier to just isolate those individual plants and uh, I think I'm gonna just take this shot and then move down to the water here's the image I'm still able to photograph with my F-mount lenses thanks to the FTZ2 adapter which Nikon kindly supplied with this camera and it's a good option if you are thinking of switching over to the Z series and want to keep the F-mount lenses and especially as they are such a good price at the moment then that really does make give it a bit more of an option for you and uh, I'm really finding that it's working really well the uh, autofocus and everything works really smoothly and I've not really noticed the difference. It does add that little bit of extra length to the lenses, but I'm not finding it any problem at all. So I'm looking around for a nice composition. We've got the falls in the background there, but I really want to include some of this wild garlic that sat around along the banks. Just right at the backdrop, there is this beautiful wash of flowers, which is really nice and breaks up the bank there. So uh, I'll keep looking, but it'd be nice to get some foreground interest with the wild garlic and the falls behind. So I switched back over to my 70 to 200 millimeter lens and I've come down to the falls. And what I'm doing is just photographing some of this beautiful wild garlic on the banks, but with some of the waterfall behind. I don't want the waterfall as a main feature. It's really just there as a bit of a background interest. So I'm shooting on a fairly long shutter speed. I'm shooting at around about two and a half seconds. I've got the polarizer on to knock back some of that reflection. And what I'm doing is just positioning the camera so that there's not too much distraction behind the wildflowers themselves. I'll show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see I've positioned the wild garlic just in front of the falls there. I've had to really be careful with this one right at the back that it doesn't disappear into the white sort of water. So I've positioned it in front of the darker rocks just by positioning myself around. But I really like that sort of water coming down behind there. And as I say, with a long shutter speed, you lose a lot of that sort of texture and it blends in really nicely. And it just shows the wild garlic just in the location that it's sat 
on the banks of this beautiful burn that's coming down through here. Just a bit of dappled light coming through the trees. And uh, yeah, anyway, if it comes out any good, it's the image. So I've come down to the burn and uh, just position myself just in front of the falls here. And the wild garlic on the backdrop there, just sweeping around the bank, is absolutely stunning. There's some light coming down through the trees, which is really giving a golden light on top of the water. I mean, it's incredibly early this morning, so it's still that sort of soft morning light. But I love that splash of colour that just leads your eye round off out into the gap there behind with the light coming through. I'll show you what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. So you can see we've got the main falls here on my main sort of foreground image. But at the backdrop there is that sweeping splash of colour of those wild orchid flowers coming around. And then we've got the light behind coming through the gap there, which really does draw the eye up through. And we're getting these patches of golden light just on the water there, which is a, giving it a real soft colour. Absolutely stunning. So I'm almost 70 to 200 millimetre lens. I'm shooting on around about a sixth of a second. Polarizer on just to knock back some of those reflections. And uh, I'm probably gonna have to uh, focus stack a little bit because uh, there's quite a distance. On the long lens, there's quite a distance between that rock foreground and the backdrop of the flowers there. So I'll probably take uh, three different uh, images just slightly adjusting the focus there. But um, absolutely beautiful. And the really nice thing is this, there isn't a drop of wind. So all of the leaves are just absolutely perfectly still. So I can get away with a longer shutter speed just to catch a little bit of movement in the water. Anyway, here's the image. So if you're wondering what happened to my D850, a while back I was out photographing on the coast and unfortunately took a bit of a tumble on some rocks and I had the camera on the tripod. And initially I thought there was no damage, but uh, on the back of the um, LCD screen, I had a big mark that came out from the left-hand side. If you've seen previous videos, you might have noticed it. And initially, initially it didn't bother me, but over time, of course, it does. So uh, I've sent it off to the repair center and. Nikon very kindly sent me the Z7 to use in its place while it's being repaired. And, uh, but uh, so far, I have to say, I'm really enjoying the camera. The pros of the Z7 are that it is an incredibly lightweight camera compared to the Z8 and the D850. I mean, I could imagine having this in my hand all day long, absolutely no problem, no weight. Of course, until you stick the 70 to 200 lens on the end of it. But I do have to say, for me, the camera's just that little bit too small. I like the size of the D850. I like the ruggedness. I like the dials. Everything is so easy to change from setting the self timer, white balance. It's all just simple dials where some of this is perhaps a little bit more difficult to access. And I also like the build quality of the Z8 and the D850. The controls and the knobs, 
just feel like they've just got that little bit more substance to them and uh, are more have a more of a pleasure of feel when you're making adjustments. But uh, good camera. I'm looking forward to seeing the images when I get back. You know, obviously the image sensors the same. We've got the same megapixels. So it'd be interesting to see how it handles the dynamic range compared to the Z8 and the D850. But uh, I've got to say, if you're looking for a lightweight camera where you're out up in the hills and weight is an issue, the Z7 II is a good option. Well, I think that's it for this episode of the vlog. If you've enjoyed the episode, please give it a big fat thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. If you're now using the Z7 and you've switched from the D850, let me know what made that decision. Is it the lightweight, easy to carry around camera, the size, ease of use, or if you went that way instead of the Z8, let me know. Look forward to reading your comments. If you have enjoyed the video and you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe hit the bell notification, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the vlog. Thanks for watching.